I mean, because those billboards, I mean, people see those billboards and you That's know correct. what it really means, basically, is what That's saying. correct. Hey, Senator, I, I'm trying to read it carefully here, but I, I want to be clear. These charges in the bill could be brought against the actual masseuse, it, although I, I don't think that's the appropriate term in a lot of places, <laughs> but also the manager, yes. the business owner, that's or correct. the landlord. No, there's nothing in here about the landlord. Uh, you know, there's always uh, a debate about how far to go, and the further you go, the, the, you know, the potential is there to lose votes in doing these kinds of things. You don't want to harm uh, people who... Uh, you know, are, are, are removed and maybe innocent. They're just doing, they're, they're abiding by the laws. You know, they have a lease with someone. Perhaps they didn't even fully know when they made it. So, so again, it, it's a matter of degree and judgment. And but, but the manager, the owner? Yeah, I think, I think we have allowed here not just the individual that may be actually uh, performing the, the act that may be a crime, but also the person who is responsible I asked because WMAZ showed about a year ago that there were a lot of uh, pretty prominent landlords, pretty prominent people that owned the businesses that were very obviously shady massage parlors. So I, that, that was why I asked that. Well, I think the bill uh, gives us a little more teeth for going after individuals who are not only the ones getting caught in the act, so to speak, but also those who may own them or manage them. I don't think any of us are landlords, Professor Chris. No, 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 no. <laughs> nor does I mean imply that at all. <laughs> So right now, if you wanted to open a massage something or a service in Macon, you could do it like you would, you know, apply to open a coffee shop? There, there are very few ordinances uh, that um, inhibit this, if any. I mean, there, there, some municipalities or local governments will have, as you'll see in this folder, they literally will have an ordinance specifically applying to spas or massage uh, parlors, a lot of times they refer to themselves as spas because that sort of removes them from a, a crime of saying, using the word massage inappropriately because of the Massage Therapist Act. So um, it, it, is a, it is, in my view, too easy for these individuals to get business licenses, and I hope the model of Gwinnett County and maybe some other places can serve as a uh, uh, some, some model legislation or ordinances at the local level that may help us. And, I, and I'm issuing a challenge to our members of the City Council and County Commission. One of the parts of this bill clarifies that they can, in fact, take acts, uh, take action at the <coughs> local level. And, I, and I, I issue a challenge to them to take that seriously and to enact ordinances both in the city and county uh, that will go a long way towards helping us deal with this issue. Even if this bill does not get passed, though, local governments can still enact these ordinances, correct? We believe that they can. There's some, been some debate about that, and, and again, uh, as we have talked to legislative council and uh, as we have talked to the Secretary of State's office, we believe they can enact, but we've made it clear in this bill. Uh, we've removed any ambiguity, we hope, with the language we've inserted into the law in this bill so that that's just really not an excuse. And it's Bill 364. 364, it was dropped this morning. Okay. Um, Section 2 refers to a violation of Chapter 6, Title 16. I'm not familiar with that. It seems to be a different code section that's mentioned elsewhere in the bill. What, and, and that, this is how people's licenses can get suspended. What is that chapter entitled? That is uh, a part of the uh, Massage Therapy Act that deals with the board that governs those licenses. Travis, so we've tried to hit it at every level we could because surprisingly there's been very, you know, it's always been just a misdemeanor. There's been no teeth and that's, that's uh, you know, so believe it or not, this is actually an increase in the penalty. Do you know what committee it will go to? I do not know for sure. I would suspect it will either go to judiciary or uh, public safety. Can you just give us one example of an ordinance in Gwinnett County that would prevent? Well, I, 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 put, I put, there are 15 pages, and so I, I don't want to sit here and maybe pick and choose. Uh, but if, if you look at this, uh, it is a part of their ordinances. They have great definitions uh, at, the, uh, at the first part, which includes spa establishments, which is often the way they, the guys that these, uh, these locations go under. Um, 
I mean, you can look, for example, on page three, uh, no license will be granted to any person who's not a citizen of the United States or a lawful, uh, lawfully admitted alien. Uh, here's one. I, I mean, I rather like this. It's a minor thing, but a letter certifying as to the good moral character of the applicant signed by three concurrently qualified and registered Gwinnett County voters of good moral character. I mean, they just put a lot of things in here that are, are in, in and of themselves perhaps small, but you add it up and it's a deterrent. Um, the, the applicant, not just, you know, the applicant must hold a furnished, a certified copy of a diploma or certificate of graduation from a state certified school, an accredited school of massage therapy, uh, and on and on it goes. I mean, these are just sort of common sense things. As I read through the ordinances in Gwinnett County, it just seemed to me that this is just, you know, it makes sense. And they felt like they could do this. If they can do it in Gwinnett County, we can do it in Bibb County. And I encourage you to look through this for many other examples of, of things that can be done in local ordinance. You said it's going to the House next week? Well, it'll, it'll be in the Senate committee. It'll be assigned, hopefully, uh, tomorrow. It'll go to committee. It'll take a couple of weeks uh, before we probably get it over to the House. But I, I'm going to request uh, an expedited hearing on the bill as soon as it is assigned to committee. And I hope we'll be able to get it to the floor of the Senate rather quickly. And certainly before day 20 or, or crossover day, day 30, I guess, is crossover day. And so we, we've got plenty of time to, uh, to, to get this done. And if it passes to the Senate and the House, how soon would it go into effect? Well, uh, the bill currently is set to go into effect on July 1. We may actually change that in, uh, in committee. We, we talked about that this morning. Uh, we may change that to uh, upon signature of the governor in committee. We may make a change if, if the committee so chooses to. To have it go into effect sooner? Yeah, well, it would go into effect upon signature of the governor. So in other words, if we pass the bill and it's all done by the middle of March, if the governor goes ahead and signs it, it becomes law immediately. But the law is written, and this is typically the case, uh, July 1st is about the earliest after the end of the session, and that just gives the governor's office time to review bills, so they, they like for there to be a little bit of time in there. Thank you very much for coming, and we appreciate your uh, interest in this issue.